the data shows that it doesn't matter what job title you have, it doesn't matter what type of work you do. You could be the CEO, the chief everything officer, or the chief environmental engineer, AKA the janitor, you can have impact on a daily basis. It really boils down to these three things. And you can follow along in your handout as well. Impact is created when all three of these things are present. You need all three. Number one, it starts with value. Value could be defined a bunch of different ways. Here's how I define it. Value is doing work that aligns with the goals and the strategic objectives of the business. If you are not doing work that aligns with the goals and the strategic objectives of the business, you are not bringing value on a consistent basis. This is not your pet project. This is not the little thing you're doing on the side. It's like, oh, you know Steve, he's always over there working on something. There's no Steve's in here today, right? No Steve. <laughs> okay. I'm safe with Steve's. You'll have him here at some point. Okay. I won't use it for the third one then, because it was safe in the first two. I gotta come up with a different name for the third one. But this is <laughs> I should use it anyway. I should use it and look directly at him. There, there's Steve in the corner. No, I won't do that. Um, I should have used Caleb last time he was here. Anyway, you have to be doing work that aligns with the strategic objectives and the goals of the business. This doesn't matter if you are uh, working as a painter, an estimator. It doesn't matter if you're in sales or ops. It doesn't matter if you're working in IT, HR, or marketing. If you're not doing work that aligns with the strategic goals and objectives of the business, it's going to be really difficult for you to bring value. That is a non-negotiable as it relates to bringing value and creating impact. So that's one. The next one, a little harder to track. I'll show you how you can have evidence of it, but it's influence. After you bring value, you have to have influence. Influence is the ability to impact the behaviors, mindset, and the results of others. Contrary to popular belief, influence is not a popularity contest. It's not about the nicest dress. It's not about who gets the biggest lives in the meeting. It's about driving results through others. In fact, the only evidence of your influence is how well you drive results through others. And I'm not just talking about the people that report to you. A lot of times the manager is not the leader and the leader of the crew is not the manager. This is not title related. This is totally influence behavior based related. So you can have influence on the people that you work with even if you guys have the same job title. We see this a lot actually. We see someone who has done that job so well for so long, has a lot of skills, a lot of industry experience. Everybody comes to them and asks questions instead of going to the leader for whatever reason. Right? That person has a lot of influence on the team. They may not be the leader, but they're definitely influential. So you gotta have value, you gotta have influence. Third thing, organizational buy-in. Organizational buy-in is having the support and confidence of key stakeholders in your abilities or your solutions. This one is, could be a little elusive as well. If we're gonna create impact on a consistent basis, a lot of times it's gonna require us to think outside and work outside of the box that we work in every day. If you don't have organizational buy-in from your direct leader or from your stakeholders or from your partners or the people that you work with uh, cross-functionally, if you don't have that organizational buy-in, they don't believe in the ideas that you bring to the table, it's gonna be really difficult for you to have an impact on a consistent basis. I want you to look at these three and think about the times where you believe you've had impact in your career. Now that we've defined it, we kind of got the foundation built. Think about the times you believe that you had impact in your career and think about how it measures up to these three. One thing I want to call out when we're talking about impact, what we're not talking about is being a bad employee versus a good employee. There are times in your career where you may not be considered an impact player. You may have two of the three and not all three. You may have one of the three and not all three. That doesn't make you a bad employee. You could still be a great employee. You're just not having the impact that you could have at your full strength. Uh, there's a lot of times where people are bringing great value, right? Just the nature of their job is directly aligned with the strategic goals and objectives of the business. They're gonna bring value. Um, 
They may have some influence, right? They may be that person on the team that's just the rock that people can go to for questions. But nobody really knows or cares about their ideas, and they don't even care about sharing them. Is that person a bad employee? You can answer verbally. It's okay. I know some of you are like up to here in chicken and pasta, but it's okay. <laughs> if pasta comes out when you answer, I'll accept it. Just answer. Uh, no, I would say that person is not a bad employee. That person's still a really good employee. When you read the book, the book will separate it into two parts. It'll separate it into contributors versus impact players. Now, <clears throat> if I were writing this book, and I didn't, and I, actually I haven't written any book. I barely wrote a LinkedIn post this morning. Um, but if I did, I would have had three categories. I would have had contributors, impact players, and then I would have had the actively disengaged. The actively disengaged are what I would consider the bad employees. These are the ones intentionally tearing down all the efforts of the people around them, intentionally going against company policy, intentionally going against uh, company culture. These are the ones of the, the types of people that we don't want working at Renovia, right? When we look at the difference between contributors and impact players, we're not talking about good employee versus bad employee. Those are both good employees, and we'll go through some examples. Those are both people doing an amazing job. The difference is this, contributors have a set of assumptions and practices that get a job done and make a contribution, but fall short of their full potential and high impact. That's a contributor, they're still getting their job done. They're just not hitting their full potential. An impact player, on the other hand, they have a mode of thinking that when consistently adopted, it leads to high value contributions and high impact on a consistent basis. That's the difference we're talking about. It's really a mindset and a behavior. One of my favorite quotes from the book, it says, you don't need special talent or capability, but you do need to understand the mindsets and behaviors that differentiate impact players from other contributors. I love that because a lot of times it's easy for us to think that the people that are killing it at work, the people that are doing an amazing job, the people that are getting ahead, getting the promotions, making an impact, oh, they're just talented. Oh, they're just special. They're just gifted. They just have something that we don't have. That's not true. They may have something that you don't have, but the only difference is the mindset. Right? It's your mindset that informs your behaviors, and then your behaviors create your results, your results shape your reality. It starts with a mindset. When we think about being a contributor or an impact player, we get faced with decisions every day, and it literally is our mindset deciding which way we're going to go. Are we going to go down the path of contributing, or are we going to go down the path of being an impact player? Now, if we're really honest with ourselves, which we said we would be for the next 30 minutes now, <laughs> We said we would be, right? We're going to be really honest with ourselves. When we look at this definition of contributor versus impact player, if we're honest, we probably vacillate between the two. Think about your entire career. Think about what you've done in 2023. There's probably times where you are just like killing the game. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. You're going above and beyond. You're creating a high amount of impact at the workplace. There are some times where you're just contributing. That's okay too. We need both. In fact, most organizations are full of contributors and a small percentage of them are impact, become impact players. That's okay, contributors keep the wheels turning. You'll be a contributor based on a number of different factors. Some are not even in your control. You get promoted today, congratulations, you just got promoted. It's not real, but it's real today. Uh, you just got promoted, brand new job. You don't even know what it is yet, but I want you to start doing it right now, go. You're probably not gonna be able to have a high impact. If I gave you a little instruction, you may be able to do the job. You may do it to the best of your ability, but you don't know enough about it. You don't have enough skills, enough experience to do the job at a high level. You're not going to be an impact player in that moment. It doesn't make you a bad employee. You're still doing a great job. With time, with the right experience, with the right skill set, the right mindset, the right tool set, you can start creating impact. We all love working for Renovia, right? We love being Renovians. Renovia is a great place, but we also have a life outside of Renovia. Some of us are just like, we don't work 24-8 for Renovia. <laughs> Some of us do other things, right? What happens when you go home and uh, grandma's sick, our mom is sick, or dad is sick, or wife, husband's sick? What if you get pregnant, wife gets pregnant? What are about other extenuating circumstances that happen outside of work and your mind is there? You're still gonna show up and do your job. You're still gonna be contributing. 
But your mental capacity may be in a place where you cannot create high impact. That's okay. So as we go through this, we're going to go through some examples. I just want to be clear of what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. What I'm saying is there is a difference between contributors and impact players. The difference is mindset and behaviors. What I'm not saying is because you're contributing in a given situation that you're a bad employee. Everybody clear on that? Okay, good.